I am curious, like from from kind of a an investment standpoint here, like do you think it's worth the United States getting involved at that level? Uh, like not what, not right now yeah. because it's twenty five years, four hundred billion dollars with China. Is it worth paying more than four hundred billion dollars? No. Uh, Iran's the, the day Iran signed that twenty five year, four hundred billion dollars. We probably lost Iran for a few decades. I guess I mean an investment from a, a blood and treasure standpoint, uh, like the the sacrifice that it would take for the United States to actually get involved and in, in overthrow the the regime. There. It's not worth it yeah. because the only way to be worth it is in the following way. So here here's the only strategy. Again, I'm in, I'm I'm not involved in any kind. This is just I'm thinking like a strategist. Is you need a a, a couple things in place. You need a Trump-like personality that is hurting China first, okay? Hurting China first. China has to feel the pain. Then U.S. has to say, if you don't pull out of this deal with Iran, we're going to increase the tariffs to 40%. So then China says, China, the, the announcement comes out saying China pulled out of the Iran deal for 25 or $400 billion dollars. That's progress. Do you remember when Huawei, do you remember the company mm-hmm. Huawei? Do you remember when every day everything we talked about was Huawei, 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 5G, Huawei, Huawei. Do you remember that whole story with Huawei? Telecommunication. Telecommunication. And then one day, what does Trump do with Huawei? Bans the phone. You remember Huawei, the, the, we were one of their bigger markets. They were growing here. They were exploding. And then do you remember the situation where the Huawei CFO, who happens to be the daughter of the owner, who in Canada got caught. Do you remember that story mm-hmm. in Canada she got caught? And then she had dealings doing a deal with Iran. Huawei was. Do you remember this whole story or no? Uh, vaguely. Type not. in Huawei CFO Canada Iran. Huawei CFO Canada Iran, and type in Iran as well. Uh, uh, dealing. Okay, Mengzu can return to China. Admits helping Huawei conceal dealings in Iran. There you go. This was a story. Washington Post. WAPO. What date was this? National Security. Go up a little bit. Uh, do you see the date? September twenty four. Yeah, this is not that long ago. This is five months ago. This is six months ago. But this has been going on for a while. So, so the only way it would work is if Trump says, "Here's more uh, tariffs. Here's more tariffs. Here's more tariffs." And then China says, "Screw this guy." You know what? Iran. We're pulling out. Then they pull out. Then his next move would be tariffs to Iran. Then him saying no other Middle Eastern banks can do business with Iran. All the banks tighten up. The people get pissed off with the regime. Of course, they're going to blame U.S. for it. And then at that time, it's like, do we want this regime to be here? Then they revolt. It's like a five-step process of getting there. But it won't happen without China. Yeah, It won't happen without China. So uh, we get them. Uh, uh, then we can do something with Iran. Uh, anyway, other than China, what other country, from a business standpoint, yeah. dealing standpoint, are invested in Iran? Or, or, or is Iran doing business with actively? Let me ask you a question. Who do you think is more, re- this is a pretty weird question to ask. Who's more reasonable, Putin or Xi? <laughs> Who's more reasonable? I have an my answer. Gut, it's not even close. My gut is telling me Putin. It's not even close. I'm telling you, it's not even close. That you think Putin is more reasonable? There is no way it's even close that Putin is more reasonable than she is. There's no way. You're saying she is the least reasonable let, person. Let me ask you a question. Are you more worried about visiting China or Russia? China, by oh, far. If I told you right now, let's go to Moscow, Leningrad for a week for vacation, would you at all be worried? Uh, yeah, I'd be a little worried. What but percentage? I, would, I, I get your point. I, I'm yeah, just saying. Go I, to China, I, I would, so let's go to China for a week and do yeah. a vlog or do videos, do some interviews. Yeah. You probably, if I told you right now, hey, you no, know, no, no, uh, no, no, no. the center of Houston Rockets invited us with Ennis Cantor to go to China to see how great the country is. And then and I say, how are you doing? You'd probably take vacation that week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you no. know what? But the point being, yeah. I think Putin is more reasonable. So who has incentives? Putin <clears throat> has to be good with Iran still. Not good, but it's right there. So they're dealing there between Caspian Sea and them. Everybody has to figure out a way to be okay with that neighbor because it ain't going away. It's not like it's you're living in a gated community and there's a terrible of a neighbor that is just a mess and you're hoping one day they move. Iran's not going to move. It's Countries like, in the EU uh, deal with them? And not not as a, uh, not uh, to the levels of because remember EU uh, individual countries to deal with Iran have to be also held accountable to the other countries in EU. So you're almost one major country. So. I think it's very different in EU. I may be wrong than it would be in countries that are closer to Iran. But again, I, I would tell you, I think Putin is 10 times more reasonable than she. 
is in China. Do you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I think, uh, you know, for from my standpoint, both countries have a, a level of national pride that kind of trumps everything else, the, the way that the United States used to have, you know, uh, and that's why they're, they're emerging as, I think, you know, countries that are going to eclipse us sooner than later. Uh, you could argue that in, in a number of ways China already has. I think they're still dependent enough on us to where they, they couldn't uh, execute certain things that they probably would once they get to that point. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, but both of them, I think, are, uh, while they're hardline guys and they're, you know, the, the pride and, and success of their country is kind of the, the pinnacle of, of what they base all their decisions off of, both of them are also not dumb enough or, or so emotional about those uh, those principles that they have that they're that they're not willing to look at it no different than you did with Iran. Like you have a, I think a natural bias to want to see the United States get involved, but your your non-emotional side says no. You need to do it this way first. You know, whereas most people wouldn't do that. And I think from a leadership standpoint in, in those two countries, that's that's necessary, and that's why they they do the business deals that they do and, and are as successful as they are in, in executing them. Yeah. Well, by the way, it's. China compared to Russia, it's not even close. No, China, China, I mean, China is a hundred x yeah. what, what Russia is in every way. Exactly, and I, I don't even know what the other than oil industry. What's what kind of industry does Russia have other than oligarchy and vodka. oil? But yeah. <laughs> vodka, the vodka uh, is good industry. But China has, is, in many respects, like you said, Mike, is going to surpass the United States. Keep in mind, they have one point three billion people. Yeah. Um, Russia. Putin is way more, has to be way more of a strategist, you know, ex-KGB, than, I I, than uh, I she so. has to be. I, I wouldn't, I, I think they're both very, very capable in, in that regard. You yeah, know? but China is at least, like you used this analogy before, if there's, a, if there's a poker hand, China at least has a flush or a straight. Putin's playing with like a pair of threes and he's like pretending that he's got, you know, pocket aces. He doesn't have... Yeah. The, the, the economy, hand you think he has. Economy is one thing, which you're right. If you want to show that real quick, Tyler, to uh, validate uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Adam's point, David, if you can put that on the screen and zoom in even a little bit more, you see how big Japan, China is, Japan is, U.S. is, France is, Germany is, Italy is, U.K. is, Canada is. Now mm -hmm. find Russia. I don't find know Russia. if they're top 10, and if they are, they're number 10 or 11. It's bo bottom right. Or you got, you got to zoom in like more. The four o'clock. Right. Zoom in. Look at right. United States, twenty three trillion. Russia, all the way to the right. Yeah, one point yeah. six five trillion. Four times yeah. bigger than Norway. And okay. US, By the way, where's South Korea on this? Tiny little South Korea. I don't know if you could find it. Yeah, anywhere. top right. One point okay. eight two trillion. One point eight two trillion. Bigger than Russia. Bigger than Russia. Yeah, little ass point. South Korea but, but, has a bigger GDP but now, than but Russia. We're now flip this. Now go to uh, uh, military world, world leaders with nuclear bombs. World they're, leaders. They're with top nuclear. of the list. Okay. No doubt. But you got to realize. I mean, that's that's like say something. You know, look at that. Say something, China. And I click on it too, so you see the rest. Mm -hmm. Go a little lower to see the rest. See, see if there's a leader's bulletin on there. Okay, check that out. All right, so uh, 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 <clears throat> nuclear, what do you see? Uh, uh, U.S. is at the top. I'm curious as to why they're at the top, because Russia's both of Russia's numbers are higher. higher. Go, go, that's not a, uh, go, go to another <clears throat> chart, because this Wikipedia, go to another one. Go back. Go back. There's another one that shows it's a side. Go a little lower. There's one that shows. You can just go to uh, images. Uh, I'm uh, sure. If you uh, go to uh, images, uh, it'll uh, give you a graph. Click on the click on that one right there. Armscontrol.org. Let's see what that is. Uh, go a little lower to see if they're ranking it because is there's that? a better site that shows. There you go. Russia six thousand two fifty seven. They're okay. the only country that is anywhere near the United States. No, no, and no. They're more. ahead. No, yeah, they're exactly. ahead. Look at look at U.S. Go a little. Go Tyler. Zoom in even more. U.S. is fifty five fifty. India is one fifty six. Look at China, three fifty. They're third. But mm -hmm. Russia is 20 times more, 18 times more than what China is. So it, Russia knows that they're decades ahead. By the time China catches a nuclear warhead, you know, World War III may have taken place yeah. by I mean, the time they try to catch up. You kind of have to ask yourself, though, I mean, at, at what point does it not even matter? I mean, to me, 350 50 nuclear weapons is still enough to kill everybody on the planet. It's who's know? the crazy enough guy yeah. that can pull the well, trigger. Is, is yeah. this one yeah. of those things where the, the best defense is a good offense or the best offense is a good defense where it's like... Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the fact that... Uh, you know that all these numbers even exist is is proof of that. Is that it's it's a deterrent. Uh, you know, I, I also find it interesting. The United States is the only country that's actually used them. You know, um, but you know, so for us to 
to metal the way that we do, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is, is a little, a little uh, convenient or by, strange. But By the way, the, the India-Pakistan situation that's going on, I don't know if you have any strong yeah. things about it. They said that's the most dangerous border in the world. They're yeah, both sure. armed nuclearly, and yeah. they border each other, and they are enemies. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I don't dispute that uh, from, from that standpoint. I mean, I guess the good news is it's, it's at least there. You know, uh, as opposed to here, not that I'd want to see any any more nuclear weapons being used, but mm -hmm. but you know, I think back to to Pat's point is that you know R Russia ha has a, a bigger thorn in the side of of the entire world that way. You know, like they're they're more capable of causing bigger problems. I think at, at the drop of a hat or in a in a in a heated exchange uh, more so than probably China is. From a military perspective, for sure. From a economic perspective, well, they are below. Uh, a yeah. tiny country like well, South Korea. I mean, even militarily, outside of, of the, the nuke capacity, they're not that capable. Uh, I mean, they're nowhere near as capable as the United States or China. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's the, the nuclear stockpile. And that's kind of the great equalizer. I mean, nuclear weapons are kind of the, the firearms of, of, of countries that way. Uh, if, if you kind of parallel it to, say, a 70-year-old woman with a with a revolver, I mean, like the the nuclear weapons gives people a stage. That's why Iran is so hell bent on on getting them, is because it it enters you into a, a realm of respect internationally that, that just doesn't exist in any other way. So, if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.